So I heard that you want to start making 3D environments. Well, ho, 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 do I have the perfect gift for you, little mother... <laughs> So before you start creating your first 3D environment, you have to decide what software you want to use. The two best free software out there right now are Blender and UE5. Now because I've never made renders in Blender before, this tutorial is going to focus specifically on how to make environments in Unreal Engine. Now Unreal Engine by default uses real-time rendering, which means that it's going to render everything in real time. Well, yeah, it's in the fucking name. This means that you have to be relatively optimized with your scene depending on what specs you have and if you don't want your computer to explode. But now that you have Unreal Engine installed, it's time to start looking for references. When looking for references, I like to use a software called PureRef. PureRef is basically a software where you can drag in images from online into the program to easily create boards for your references. Now I want to put a larger emphasis on looking for references because a lot of beginners tend to skip this step because they think that they have a good idea of what they want their scene to look like. But trust me, you don't. So look for references for everything. That includes the general mood that you want to convey for your scene, the structural patterns that might appear frequently in your scene, the props that you plan to model in your scene, and the general lighting that you want for your scene. It's also important to keep in mind that your initial idea of the scene might change throughout this process, and that's totally normal and that could be even better than what you originally had in mind. Once you have all of your references gathered, now it's time to start blocking out your scene. Now this is the part of the process where you head into Unreal Engine and you set up a camera for your scene. It's also the part where you get a rough lighting path for your scene and where you set the composition for your scene. To set up a camera in Unreal Engine, all you have to do is bing, bam, and boom. And then you can start piloting your camera to move it around and to set your focal length to whatever you want it to be. Also, at this point, you should have a scale man in your scene, so drop that motherfucker in there. There are a lot of basic block out models and tools in Unreal Engine that you can use, but if you have a clearer idea of what you want your scene to look like, you can make basic custom block out models for your scene. Now, in terms of composition though, there are way too many things to cover, so to me, the most important aspect of composition is knowing what to have in your foreground, middle ground, and background. Other factors include leading the viewer's eyes, the rule of thirds, some stupid fucking Fibonacci sequence thing, making contrast with color, making contrast with the light sources. There's a lot of bullshit that comes with composition, so I wouldn't worry about getting a perfect composition for your scene as a beginner. It's one of the things where the more you work on it, the better you'll eventually get. When you're blocking out your scene, it's also important to not leave any gaps in your scene. So what I mean is that viewers should not be able to look at the horizon all the way at the back unless if it's intentional, I guess. Fine, I hate you then. But because of that, I recommend, especially if you're a beginner, to focus on smaller scaled scenes first. Because larger scenes can be too intimidating at first. But if you think that you're a smarty barty and you want to start working on a larger scale scene, then I recommend you focus on modularity. Modularity is basically when you break down assets into individual parts and then you kitbash them in engine. That way you can have a bunch of different buildings and structures without but having to remodel everything again. Now on to 3D modeling. If you don't know how to 3D model, then you should watch my other video, you silly baka. But once you're done with blocking out your scene and you have a rough lighting pass that you're satisfied with, you can start to make the 3D models for your scene. As a general guideline, you should start with larger details then work your way down to smaller details. So I usually like to start with landscapes in the background or large structures in the scene, and then I slowly make my way down to set dressing props. But when you're done with 3D modeling all of the props in your scene and you want to to start set dressing it, this is when you have to put a huge emphasis on environmental storytelling. Now what is environmental storytelling you might ask? Well first of all, you silly goose, it's right in the name. You tell a story with your environment. Most good environments have some form of environmental storytelling. And environmental storytelling comes in many forms. It could come in how you texture your props, it could come in the way you place your prop, and it could also come with the way you light your scene. But for this part, you can imagine that you're a detective coming into a scene and instead of looking for clues from the objects around you, you're the one placing the clues of the objects around you. Now, environmental storytelling is the part where a lot of beginner environment artists miss because oftentimes you're mostly focused on making the environment look good rather than making the environment fun and feel lived in. So when you're working on your scene, you should ask yourself, what kind of story do you want to tell with that scene? And then you can put yourself into that scene and imagine how the objects would move around after you're done with whatever story you want to tell in that scene. So you finish addressing your scene and you take a look at your scene and it still kind of looks like doo-doo. But before you uninstall Unreal Engine, you should check out the post-processing volume. So what you want to do is drag a post-process volume into your scene, scroll down and look for infinite extent and tick that shit. What it basically does is that it applies post-processing to all of your cameras regardless if you're in the post-processing volume or not. There are a lot of post-processing techniques that you can do in Unreal, so I'm not gonna go in depth into all of them, but in general, you have Bloom, 
exposure, chromatic aberration, lens flares, vignette, film grain, ambient occlusion, and a bunch of other cool color grading shit. So feel free to definitely explore the post-processing volume and play around with the settings to get the look that you want. But once you're done with post-processing and you're still not satisfied with your scene, chill. Do not press the uninstall button. Here are a couple of additional tips to try to make your doo-doo scene not doo-doo. The first one is height fog. Fog is basically one of the subtle things in environments where if you have it in your scene, you don't really notice it, but if you don't have it, that's when it becomes blatantly obvious and your scene becomes doo-doo. There are two types of fogs in Unreal. One is the exponential height fog, which applies to everything, and one is the local height fog, where it only applies within the specific volume, so you can add it to subtle places to get that foggy effect. But when you're using your exponential height fog make sure you turn on volumetric fog that makes your scene look so much better but if it doesn't then i guess turn it off but with volumetric fog combined with your directional light in specific angles you could also replicate god rays in your scene the second tip is to be intentional with your lighting what i mean is that use your lights to guide the viewer's eye lighting is also an important factor in environment art that beginners tend to not really care about but lighting can make or break your scene so play around with that directional light play around with your skylight play around with your points and rex light to kind to get more dynamic lighting in your scene. You should also justify all of your light sources, so you shouldn't have random light sources shining from nowhere. But on the other hand, if you want to highlight specific details or there are certain parts in your scene that is too dark, you can add in subtle point or rec lights, turn off cast shadow, and select a color that kind of matches the general lighting around that area to kind of fake bounce lighting and to kind of highlight details that you previously couldn't see. Nice. Now moving on to displacement maps. Displacement maps can be a bit of a pain in the ass to set up in Unreal, but if you want that extra depth in your materials, it's definitely worth the extra work. The good thing about using displacement maps in Unreal is that it doesn't require extra vertices. It's because displacement maps in Unreal works with Nanite, and it only works with Nanite in Unreal, so you have to make sure that you have Nanite enabled in the objects that you want displacement maps to be applied on. But if you want to set up displacement maps, head into your project folder, go into the config folder, and look for your default engine.ini and then you're gonna want to open it up with notepad and look for the script forward slash engine.render settings and then you're gonna want to paste these two commands into it it's gonna be in the description as well so you can just copy and paste from there and then once you're done boot up unreal open up your material and then you're gonna see a displacement input but before you hook that up go into the details panel and make sure you have enable tessellation enable and then once you plug your height map in type in displacement in the search bar of the details panel and you can play around with the magnitude and the center higher magnitude values essentially make the materials pop out more duh but anyways for the most part that is the general guideline to start modeling your first 3d environment now similar to 3d modeling and basically everything you do in life making 3d environments is an extremely complicated process so there's no way that i could fit everything into this video but if you already know everything in the video then of course there are a lot more advanced concepts that you can still learn as well such as using blueprints splines trim sheets vertex painting decals and a lot of other bullshit to up your environment art game but yeah that's basically it let me know if you guys have any specific tutorials or ideas that you want me to cover and i might get to it maybe i will maybe i won't who knows goodbye <laughs>